Aloha guys, Molly here from Discover the Big Island Real Estate. I'm here with Dustin and he just returned yes. from a huge trip. I have. <laughs> he did. Uh, so Dustin, for how long have you lived on this island? So I moved to the Big Island in 2001, I believe. So it was about 13 years before I left to go sail around the world. So about seven and a half years ago. Just around the world. Yeah. <laughs> what prompted you to travel around the world? So about, be about 13 years ago, I got in this horrible motorcycle crash. I was hit by a drunk driver on my way home. I was living in Waikoloa at the time. Mm -hmm. And the person that hit me had bad insurance. And my own health insurance company sued me for about half a million dollars. And so I had this horrible debt, and I had to go bankrupt. I had these two businesses at the time, but they both started to fail while I was doing my recovery. Right. And at one point, about four years after the accident, I was debt-free. I finished my bankruptcy, and I paid my taxes, and I started looking for things to do. And I, my businesses were four years out of maintenance, and but I had no cash and no credit to reinvest. Right. So I started looking for random stuff, and I came across this website of people who had sailed around the world and set a record. And I was like, there's no double MPT on that list. So I'm going to go do that. So you embarked on this journey. And what was your experience with sailing? I had zero sailing experience to start with. I actually, I bought a $12,000 boat and I learned to sail off of YouTube and books. And so, yeah. Just like everybody else. You yeah. know, it's like we turn to YouTube <laughs> or online to figure things out. That's true. I, I learned diesel mechanics off of YouTube. <laughs> so, <laughs> so things will break handy. in the boat yeah. and you'll be like, okay, let me just get on Wi-Fi and figure it out. Exactly. And YouTube's not even paying me for this. <laughs> <laughs> so what were the challenges that you came across while you were sailing around the world with, you know, like what was that first year for you? The first year was pretty good. It, uh, I didn't really know that much about sailing, so I was really cautious. And so I was just using the head sail because I was too nervous to use the main sail as well. Right. And, um, and the biggest challenges was the financing of it. It turned out to be more expensive than I thought, and the boat was always breaking down. And so eventually I had to turn to crowdfunding to fund the trip. But right. in the beginning, I was too afraid to do that because I didn't have any sailing experience. So right. I didn't want to ask people for money to go do something I'd never done before. Right. And now, is there like, how did you get funded? So it was a GoFundMe campaign? Yes, yeah, so I have a GoFundMe and a Patreon. And oh. I didn't start these until about two and a half years into the trip. So right. I got to Thailand. And my boat was just a complete wreck. And um, well, Perfect place for yeah. a wreck, right? <laughs> and so I started the GoFundMe and I raised enough to get a new boat. And wow. I bought a new boat and continued on. Wow. What was your biggest motivation for you to continue on these trips? Uh, part of it was a lack of options. It, uh, mm -hmm. And then once I got going, it's like I kind of like looked to Forrest Gump for like inspiration <laughs> because, you know, he didn't have a whole lot of brilliance. You know, he just kept going forward. And so as long as I was making a few miles every day, you know, it's like I was getting closer to home. Right. Was there a time or a place in that journey where you were like, man, I just feel like giving up. Like this is, this is, this is not what I sign up for. Yeah. So when I got to Bali is when the boat really started to fall apart. Right. And I got towed back into Bali four times and I was just getting about five miles into what was going to be a thousand mile trip. Mm. And, uh, Eventually, I, you know, the transmission went out, the engine went out, and then uh, the force day on the mast came down, which is usually you lose the mast when that happens. Wow. And so I was, I was out of money, so I was borrowing money and stuff. And um, finally, I got this Balinese blessing on the boat. <laughs> and there was different levels. They had, like, the bottom level, and then the top level was sacrificing <laughs> a live chicken. And I was like, okay, I don't really want blood all over my boat. So I went to the level just below the uh -huh. chicken. If I got towed in again, the chicken was going down. <laughs> So, okay. So, but what, what did that entail? What was that blessing about? It was just a it was blessing. Similar from... to a Hawaiian blessing. Oh, okay. There was a lot of flowers and like the little baskets and they put it on the bow and they did a chant. And, right. And then, uh, yeah, and then I got it to Thailand okay. But at that point, I was fatigued and really wondering if I wanted to keep going. Mm. And I had to do a GoFundMe. And so once I made the choice to do that, then I felt like I committed to finish my trip. Right. So you, you really like, you know, you, you held on to your mission, yeah. right? And yeah. then you turned to GoFundMe, you mm -hmm. got your funds, yeah. and then you're like, okay, I think I'm going to be okay. 
Yeah, yeah. And after that, it's actually I've been moving along pretty well. And wow. so the first really big boat problem I've had at sea since then was my trip to uh, the Marquesas from right. Galapagos. Right. And my steering system failed, but <laughs> it. Uh, but that was the first really big problem I had at sea since then. Right. Oh my gosh, what a journey you had. Yeah. <gasps> Would he do it again? Yeah, I don't know if I'd do it alone again. It, uh, Going I at think, it alone. Yeah. And it made Did it you tricky. travel with somebody or it was no, entirely on your own? It was entirely solo. So, wow. And there's rules, like if I wow. wanted to set the record, I couldn't have anyone on the boat for any like forward mile towards my trip. So I could right. have friends visit and we'd go sail around the islands and come back. Right. But I always had to drop them back off at the same spot and continue on by myself. And, oh, man. Yeah. That, I mean, I'm pretty sure you don't hear these stories very often of people traveling around the world. Yeah. And, and now it's solo. Mm -hmm. with like at the beginning very little experience yeah. i mean you truly went for it yeah there's only about 300 people that have ever sailed around the world alone wow and now one double amputee wow so yeah it's a small fraternity by comparison <laughs> over 600 people have been into space right so, yeah. how were how were you able to connect with those people like online or the other people that said yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there, there was a website people. for them and Got it. the website's no longer being maintained, so they're not keeping as close a track as they did. Right. So. Well, for anybody looking for a job, you know, web designer <laughs> for, yeah. for that website. True. Yeah, that'd be something <laughs> nice to keep up. Is there any other companies or any other supporters that are pro this type of journeys? Um, yeah, for me, Bristol Marine sponsored a lot of the work on my boat. Um, my prosthetics. Mm -hmm. Uh, College Park Prosthetics has mm -hmm. bought me a couple of feet, um, and then Precision Prosthetics in San Francisco has m been making my sockets recently. Wow. And before that, I was really struggling to get prosthetics in different locations because right. right. the setup for insurance to get a prosthetic is you have to get a doctor's like prescription. Right, and then you're and out in I'm the I'm out ocean. in the middle of nowhere, yeah. How would they deliver? Or you had to deliver it They'd somewhere on They'd have to ship Tampa. the parts to wherever right. I was. Yeah. Wow. Did you experience, you know, like everything, I'm in real estate and things near the water experience rust? Oh, yeah. Or, or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those things aren't meant to be in salt water. <laughs> How did you manage that? I, I replace a lot of the parts to make Got it more it. seaworthy. And yeah. then I use, like, there's different, like, this gel called Tef Gel. You put it in between, like, aluminum and stainless to keep it from corroding. Right. Wow. So, uh, you should get a sponsorship from that company, right? Yeah, the Tef Gel, too. Yeah. That would yeah, be good. <laughs> right? What do you think has been, like, the biggest lesson that you've learned when you were out traveling? Oh, gosh. Um, just everybody, like, every country I visited. I visited about 36 countries on a trip around the world. Yeah. And... I never felt like an outsider or a tourist, you know. Most of the time you show up to a new place and people see you as a tourist or an ATM machine. Right, But right. if you're there long enough, you know, then you're welcome in their homes, you hang out you're with the kids, the and you're not the ATM machine anymore. <laughs> and, um, and they're helpful on the boat, you know, they'll, you know, invite me to dinners and go out fishing or spear fishing or whatever. And, and uh, so it was nice, like, even though I was alone for a large portion of the trip, Right. Everywhere I went, like, I was really taken in. And, like, welcoming. Mm -hmm. They were welcoming you. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like the Hawaii Aloha, you know. It's oh. like everywhere I went, I kind of experienced that as well. That's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what's in it? What's in your future now? Like, what's what's in front of you? Like, what, what are your future plans? So, I'm working on a book, which I will hopefully finish within the year. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm going to try to get into public speaking a little bit yeah. and, uh, I'm going to get my captain's license. Yeah. So maybe I'll actually, <laughs> maybe I'll actually get paid to work on boats <laughs> yeah. at some point. Yeah. And you learn a couple of things yeah. here and there. <laughs> so I figure between those things, maybe something will turn up. Right. I would really like to work on environmental projects. Oh my goodness. And what a beautiful place for that here. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much studies yeah, in oh, so true. many places, Nelha, mm -hmm. you know, there's like a lot of studies, yeah. you know, in the ocean and you may be a perfect fit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would love to take people out and, you know, whatever their project is, I'd like to support it. Yeah, I would like to bring more attention to the Pacific Garbage Patch. I did right. sail through that once. Right. And I really want to do some work up north, like the Northwest Passage and the Northeast Passage. Yeah. And bring some attention to the ice melt. Oh, um, wow. Because I went to Antarctica a couple of years ago as well. 
and just seeing like in the American base in Palmer Station, you see all these photos of every year and they're discovering new islands every year and stuff because, you know, there was big, you know, big thick ice and, right. you know, they still get the seasonal ice that extends out, but it's the big, huge, you know, thick ice is disappearing. Right. And um, so it's, there's a lot happening that I would really like to bring some attention to. Right. Well, what a beautiful way now that you're getting into all these um, areas of, you know, writing a book and public speaking and perhaps, you know, now you have more platforms mm -hmm. where you can share your messaging. Yeah, exactly. And I've gotten some sponsorship. And, totally. Yeah, so there's a few companies behind me too. So hopefully I could get them on board also. Well, are, is there anything that uh, you would like to share with the people that are watching that are finding your story super inspiring? Um, what will be a, 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 like a, a message that this journey has kind of taught you in a way, if you could summarize it in a very simple way for people to just like take that away? So if you take my journey from beginning to finish, since my accident recovery till now, there was a moment uh, like right after I got hit, you know, I was on the side of the road mm -hmm. and the person who hit me had carried on. and. Um, mm -hmm. I had my cell phone survive the crash mm. and my arm flew about 50 feet from the scene of the accident and my foot was damaged enough I couldn't stand up. Mm. And so I realized this and I grabbed my phone and I called 911 and I thought about it for a second where I was like, do I really want to make this oh. call right now? Because I knew I was going to be handicapped. I knew my foot was possibly destroyed. I knew the arm probably wasn't going to get reattached. and. Um, Later on in the hospital, the doctors gave me the same choice, and they asked if you know I actually wanted to go in for surgery. Right. At this point, I was like, "Yeah, I already made this decision, guys. I want to go, and I'm going to live." Um, but like that decision process, where I was thinking about how bad things could become, I didn't at that time think about how good they could become as well. Right. And like the difference between a sad ending and a happy ending is where you end the story. And so if you just keep going, no matter how terrible things could be. It could always get pretty good too. Oh, wow. Is that good? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Thank That's you for so reaching beautiful. out. Of uh, course. Yeah. So I was I was telling Dustin that the way I found out about him, um, it was through a Facebook event. You know, I was scrolling on Facebook, yeah. it was late, and then I saw this event of saying, you know, dusting welcoming to the mm -hmm. island, and then I started to read about you, and I was so, like, impressed with your journey, and just meeting you in person, and kind of, you know, just listening to your story, I wanted to thank you so oh, much. thank you so much, I'm so happy, this is very, very nice. We're in a beautiful setting, guys, yep. we are here at the Royal Kona, and we, I, we chose this setting because... His journey has uh, been in the water, and uh, he matches the background perfectly. <laughs> My boat was actually right here for about six <laughs> months was while, right I was, while I was getting ready to go. So. Oh my goodness, what a, what a beautiful thing. And uh, well, Dustin, thank you so, so thank much. Thank you. Many blessings on your upcoming trips, your journeys, your um, projects, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to connecting with you in the future. Okay, thank you so much. Aloha, everybody. <laughs>